Hello world. Hey everybody. How's it going? Um, got a lot I'd like to share with you. I'll see what I can get done in this video and I'll try to stay on point. I got a lot on my mind, plus I got a busy day today. I was up late last night, um, saw an amazing band last night, you know, unexpectedly um, shook my shit up. Okay, I'll get to that. I love it when it happens. First thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about what I think is the beauty of the VC and also kind of uh, an aesthetic of life that, that I honor, which is to kind of let things happen naturally, let things kind of happen naturally. Now, what I mean by that is this. Um, I got involved in the vinyl community, or I, I found you guys because I found people who love records and music. It's the number one thing thing that brought me into this sphere. But while I've been here, I've discovered um, mutual interest for my music, and so that's emerged. Since that's happened, I've been meeting, or more members of the VC have been sharing with me their own history and their own music, their own um, careers sometimes and pastimes. And one of those people... Um, that I want to share with you about is Britt Helm. Uh, he's a VC member. I've forgotten his name here, uh, but I talked to him on Facebook, YouTube, vinyl community quite a bit now. And um, one thing led to the other a couple nights ago, and I discovered that this is his band, Audra. Audra. And that's 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 uh, Brett in the middle. Apparently, his brother Bart is one of the other mainstay members. Now, um, I, I want to say a lot, and I'm not saying it well yet, so let me just let these words come together. Because it was really beautiful the way that I found out that uh, Brett is in, has this band, Audra, and recorded for a label that I really like, Project Records. Um, it just, uh, I had to ask him. And I think that's what's beautiful. So I'm going to I'm gonna do some shameless promoting of Audra right now because I like this music and because it's a natural occurrence. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is when this sort of, sort of thing is beautiful to me. You know, not when someone pays you, okay? So one thing, one thing, one thing led to another and Brett said he wanted to send me some of um, his music. Hell yes. So I get this box yesterday, and the first thing I see is this t-shirt. Isn't that beautiful, guys? Audra. What a beautiful name. Now, I discovered the band Austra last year, and, and now this year, Audra. It's a beautiful word. And he also sent me um, some po a couple of um, a postcard. See, Project Records is one of those small labels that I don't know if it's around anymore, but like 4AD, um, the uh, guy that started the label had a real strong, specific aesthetic in mind. And um, everything on the label um, reflects that. I'm listening to Audra in the background, as a matter of fact. So this is a sticker he sent me. And he sent me, uh, I believe this is their latest CD. Audra, Everything Changes. Isn't this, look at that cover. Isn't that cool? Everything about the presentation of the band draws me in. What's good is that it's not just what you see, it, it's also what you hear. Notice they have a song called Sid Barrett on there. I, have, I haven't heard that song yet. Notice also how this is broken up as if it were two sides. It, des it deserves to be on, on vinyl for sure. Um, I'll post a link at the below my video where you can check out Ostra and buy their music. This is really good. Brett, thank you so much for sending this to me. You signed it for me. That's so cool. I really appreciate this. Now, the music, this stands out to me for Project because it's more rock. It's more of a, 
you know, it's got the atmosphere, but it's like, Brett, your singing reminds me of Steve Gilby. Is that the right name of the church? And the music is yours, but I hear a bit of Interpol too, if I can just make some references for other people. It's very good. You have a good voice, man. And um, it is, there's two sides to technology. The beauty of everyone being able to do their thing with the technology and art now, but also as a result, too many choices, literally. And so getting your music heard nowadays is a real challenge because everyone's making it and everyone can listen to and you know what I'm saying? I think that um, if Audra had had a promotional um, campaign, which means money, and were able to thrust this out into people's um, consciousness, um, this band could go somewhere because this is very good. So um, I'll put a link below and this is awesome. The other thing it makes me think, and I will think out loud, although this still could take forever to happen and it still may not happen. But as a result of meeting more people in the BC who are doing music, you know, doing it well, um, it does have me thinking seriously about, you know, maybe, not, not maybe, but if, if, you know, next year, trying to take on the BC compilation vinyl. I'll tell you this, my experience of making records is growing already. From making my two records for myself to making the Andrema record now for for Nick, because ultimately that's really what it is. The Andrema record really is a solo record with my involvement in other people's. Andrema's a band now, but I'm, I'm presenting Nick's, Nick's vision, you know what I'm saying? It's a challenge when you're uh, working for others. Um, I think we're all narcissistic, so I think it's, um, I don't mind saying uh, I like it best when I'm focused on me. <laughs> but this is a growing endeavor. And so who knows, maybe uh, maybe next year I'll be able to take on a compilation and you want, you want to believe one of the people I will be asking to be on it is Audra, Brett. Brett, I'll be asking you when I'm ready to do this. Someone else that I'll be really upfront about that I would definitely want on my comp is the solar system. To the boy Ellis, you know, these people, I already know what they do and I already like it. And that's the other part about doing the comp that I'm, you know, hesitant to do, you know, because I have to like it. I am not putting something on my comp that I don't like. And, and then it gets real, you know, and you piss people off. Brett, thank you so much. This fits perfectly. And um, I'm going to wear this on my gig tonight. Now, I'm going to actually, I'm going to take it off after the uh, video and preserve it, but I'm going to wear this on my gig tonight in Lincoln. Which brings me to Lincoln. Uh, I went to a show last night in Lincoln, and uh, I saw an amazing band. I'll put a link to them. Uh, one of my concerns about making long videos sometimes is I try to give a lot of information, and I also know the psychology of the brain. We only retained about this much of this much information, but everything I'm telling you, I'm, it's like I, I'm trying to tell you something that I wish, it's like I'm trying to give you some dope, okay? So anyway, I went to Lincoln last night to see the band Normal Love. Now, I was prompted to go by Gary Foster, who plays drums on Derek 2, and he's a good friend of mine. And he said, I'm going because when I was on tour with Ember Shrog, um, we stayed with a couple of the guys in this band. They're great musicians, great people. I said, okay, wow. Gary very seldom goes to his show. But then he pointed me to a video on Vimeo by them, which, again, I'll try to remember to link. It's excellent. This band is excellent. It's just what I like. It's, it's different. It's normal love. And it's a little perverse. Look at this weird-ass cover. You can't really make it out here. This woman, it's a woman, and she is wearing 
something that she designed and it's kind of weird macabre and also beautiful really kind of weird normal love survival tactics is the name of the band five piece um they, they had to read everything was scored um the music is like a punk version of universe zero or art zoid it was incredible i was not I've only seen a few shows this year, um, but this ranks up there. They were as, you know, when I went to see Radiohead, I was not expecting anything. I wasn't expecting to be blown away because of the hype, and they blew me away. Had no expectations for this band. These guys were better than Radiohead. My experience of Radiohead was ma massive. But what these guys did on that small stage in Lincoln with hardly anybody in the club, and the intensity, you know, they read, they had to read all the songs, you know, they had music stands and incredible. And then the people in the band, okay, see, this is the other thing where I get a lot of attitude, you know, about music because there's world class virtuosos driving around this country in trucks and cars, barely making a living, playing amazing music that you've never heard. Well, all these complete idiots are raking in the cash got everyone's attention I got a name no mention no names you know who I'm talking about those super famous people who are just they're just jerks okay Justin Bieber is one of them okay and here these people are this is the insert weird isn't it kind of gross but intriguing that's what I like about it kind of like real life you know I mean you know we like to um that's why we have uh, plumbing and sanitation so we can flush the shit away and we don't have to smell it. But shit is sure still a part of life. Okay? And so that's part of what I like about music that is maybe a little subversive or off the beaten path because it's so real. These guys are amazing. What a, Another thing I wanted to say about this band is the people in it. Evan Lipson is the bass player, virtuoso bass player. Song with Dynamite Club. The violinist, I have to, I gotta look up her name. Um, woman is uh, badass. Um, Jessica Pavone plays violin in the band. Next month, she's playing Carnegie Hall with Anthony Braxton. I just met her, hung out with her, had a drink with her, and watched her play her ass off with this band in front of about 25 people normal love this is the kind of shit that excites me just like um i'll go back it's a whole nother musical bag but just like audra and what brett is doing excites me this music is real these people aren't trying to put together a package and get your money like some people blatantly are and do it i'm still not going to say any names but this excites me when I meet real artists, real musicians who do it for love. Audra fits that. I'm going to go back to it, you know, because I am I am impressed by Audra. I like it. Still playing. But last night, I saw a normal love in Lincoln. Um, they opened for Touch People. The, the, the guy I did the split with, Touch People, was the main act. Um... It was all over after Normal Love. I mean, Touch People did a good set, but Normal Love tore it up. I also bought a 7-inch by them. Right away, people that come to mind that I think can really appreciate this are Sequoia Flame, Anders in Stockholm, To The Boy Ellis, anyone else that I'm not thinking of right now who is interested in adventurous, daring music, you gotta check out Normal Love. But this is an this is an honest boost because I love this. That's why I'm here, guys. I love music. I love records. So this is shameless promotion for music that I I like. That's why I'm here. Okay. That's the whole reason why I'm here is my love of music. This is going better than I thought. Okay. So while I was in Lincoln yesterday, I, I did shop a little bit. 
I also took some records and I sold some records. Um, I'm kind of slacking a little bit because so much is going on with, and I'm slacking on telling you about Derek too. Um, I, I'm at that point now where um, I should count. I might have 50 copies left. You know, it's so funny. Last week I was worried and now I look and it's like, um, I'm down to one box of Derek two already. Let me also just say, and I don't, if it sounds narcissistic, that's just too bad. We're all narcissistic. Derek two is going to sell out. This is going to sell out. Buy this while you can. One last plea to Dan Williams. Dan Williams, where are you? I hope you didn't pass away. But number 17 orange was bought by a Dan Williams. He never sent me his address. I can't give, to get the record to you, man. Where Are you still with us? So I'm going to wait a little bit longer. And if I never hear from Dan Williams, I'm going to refund his money to his account. And that's going to be an orange for sale. I don't know how I'm going to make it available. We'll see. But I did do some shopping and end up spending I didn't want to spend this money but when you want to want if you, you see something you have to okay first thing is it's uncanny I love how the serendipity of the VC and how things seem to happen connectedly all across this planet so uh, Tim Ripey or Reap uh, He's here, but he's also on Facebook, and he started posting uh, there. He showed recently where he found Genesis Live at a barn for sale for like 50 cents or a buck or something, and it was a French, which you don't see those too often. But what do I find in Lincoln last night? And um, I just thought to myself, okay, I said, what are the chances? Seriously, guys, this is how it went down. Because there was no mark on the outside. You know, I said, what are the chances? So I look at it, to pick it up and see, oh, oh, it's French import. What are the chances? This is purely speaking to the nerdy collector in me because I have three or four copies of Genesis Live already. I don't need another one. But I want this label. I want this black. I wanted this Black Charisma. I'd seen the Black Charisma before. I forget what it was I saw it on. But but when I saw Tim show his, the nerd collector comes out to me and said, man, I really want one of those too. And there was one in Lincoln waiting for me. I only paid seven bucks for it. Also, the, uh, I, 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 I bought some records at Recycled Sounds in Lincoln. And the owner of the store, Stuart, I took some records because he bought Derek 3. And sure enough, I, I said, well, I got Derek 2, snatched it, put it on immediately, played it, and played the whole record in the store. Someone come up and wanted to buy it. I love it. But while I was there, I bought two more records. And the, the, the big find I'll show last, but... As I told you, I've been, I, I'm, I would like to collect Warp Records, and I found another one, Plaid, P-Brain EP. Now, this is old. This came out in 2002, but I played it last night before going to bed, and it's great. Man, I like this. I like the, the Warp label. He had some collector's items that I couldn't afford. One I had to afford, okay? He had the Denny Girard on Duram Nova, but he wanted 150 bucks for it. That's rare. I have it on digital. It's worth it. But he also had Pelmel Rhapsody. This is a German Prague Grail. Okay. I got him down. We started at $75. I got him down to 40. This is an original copy. Excuse me, copy on a small label it's classically based really well played the first side is um based on pieces by Liszt, Liszt 
and a Rachmaninoff. And then the second side is an original suite. It's beautifully played. And um, it's the original label. You don't see these. That's partially why this is so collectible. It's a rare, it's a small label. Maybe they put a couple records out. It's an immaculate condition. For a minute, I was not, I wasn't going to buy it. And I just thought to my, because of the price, and I thought to myself, this is what I'm looking for. These prices are just not going to be coming down. I bought it. I did play it before I went to bed last night, almost all the way through. This is fan fucking tastic. And um, I think this is something that I probably. Uh, <clears throat> I probably burned this. Give me luck, okay? I may actually have burned this. Um, it's quite the collector's item, and, and I was um, I wasn't shaking like uh, <laughs> like uh, Dwayne was when he found that stack. Here's another Pell Mell album, um, Marburg. I knew I had Pell Mell burned. I may have that other one burned too, but. I thought, and then I said, I have to buy it. I really wanted the Denny Gerard, but um, I cannot afford even a hundred dollars um, for one record right now. And uh, so, yeah, that was the. Uh, I knew I had Pell Mell Burn. It's the other one. So, and that's another thing, you know. While I'm just sharing my thoughts, is. You know, if it seems like to some people who might say, God, Derek's on here a lot, on the Facebook, Facebook a lot. You know, my life is like that. It's like I'll have periods where not a lot is going on. And so I'll do this because I know that I'm going to be getting busy. And it does happen. And when you get busy as a musician, as Brett can tell you and any of you other musicians at work, when it's on, it's on. So if you're smart, you learn how to value your free time when you have it. I have to rehearse most of the next the rest of the day because I really want to be good tonight for Ember. So as far as face, Facebook is concerned, today I'll miss out on a lot of what happens there. And I really like all the posting on there. Matter of fact, I was thinking, what if someone wanted a definition of what is the vinyl community about? What is the Facebook about? I'll tell you what it's about for me. It's very simple. I love music. I love records. The idea of finding people who like records and music and like to geek out, looking at them and talking about them. That's it, pure and simple. I like showing my records and talking about them. I like it when people show their records and talk about them, especially stuff that is not, that's unusual. That's what, that's what I'm here for. Um, totally to just geek out about records and music. Brett, once again, thank you for this beautiful music. Folks, if you've heard any of this going on in the background, or this appeals to you, these are only 10 bucks. And I'll leave a link. And I don't mind shamelessly trying to promote um, Brett and once more, Normal Love, who I saw last night, blew me away. Okay, guys, be well.